it's my pleasure to join you today in your graduation and award ceremony. And I start by, first of all, saying congratulations to each and every one of you who are graduating today. Law is a very interesting and noble profession. Lawyers are often the subject of criticism. Lawyers are often the subject of ridicule. But when the pot gets heavy and you're holding a load and you need assistance, and when your rights are in challenge and your life depends upon it, or your living depends upon it, your livelihood depends upon it, lawyers quickly become best friends to those most in need of good counsel and advice. I welcome you to a noble profession. I welcome you to the journey ahead to professional qualification. ILAS is an institute that has excelled academically for a very long time. ILAS has been the recipient of numerous awards, global awards, ILAS today stands shoulder to shoulder with many first-class universities in the world. After all, your graduates have performed exceptionally well at the Sir Hugh Wooding Law School, just by way of an example. Quite a few years ago, the philosophy was that an external graduate of the University of London didn't have the advantage that a University of the West Indies graduate had at the Hewitting Law School experience. That has now been put to rest. Today, many of you receive awards for outstanding performance, right down to a patriotic spirit. Today, many of you reflect upon that journey of the three years that you have had in your LLB degree, or perhaps if you did it part-time, a little bit longer. But today, I last stands as a witness to the rest of the world having caught on to virtual learning, distance education, as the COVID pandemic has really leveled the playing field. The rest of society has caught up with the sheer dedication that online experiences can provide in advancing academia. I'd like to lay a small challenge to the graduates. And I'd like to say that the world stands in a better place if we find passion for purpose. Trinidad and Tobago is at a crossroads. Trinidad and Tobago is wrestling with issues that have been around for quite some time. But Trinidad and Tobago has an opportunity unlike many other jurisdictions. We are at the crossroads of implementing significant reforms right across our judicial system, right across our land registry system, right across our intellectual property system, right across many different areas, including oil and gas, solar energy, sport. And the one thing that law offers is an opportunity to be involved in any enterprise. Legal training provides an opportunity for work and involvement in advancing society in any field. It could be in medicine, it could be in cryptocurrency. But the challenge that I offer right now is to pay attention to the issues that matter to where you see yourselves in a few years from now. In terms of opportunity, I can say that with the birth of our follow the money agenda, with the birth of the civil asset forfeiture regime, with the birth of the removal of beneficial ownership, with the birth of money laundering and prosecution as we have significantly expanded the demonetization regime, the search into the financial intelligence unit, the lifting of secrecy in bank accounts and prosecutions. There is a vast opportunity for the civil law and criminal law to begin to unite. And therefore, I would like you to focus upon that growth point that is available to you. I'd like you to equally focus upon the radical reforms in our land registration system, where the use of technology in the certainty of ownership in the civil law 
also feeds into the criminal law because you find the proceeds of crime invested in land, in companies, or in cash. I'd like you to also focus upon the regulatory environment as the Financial Action Task Force and Global Forum has significantly expanded regulatory regimes, there is a significant opportunity in terms of career path to be involved in the regulatory environment in any one of the financial institutions, in any one of the listed businesses, in any one of the regimes that are now coming into focus, for instance, the gaming industry. I'd like you to also spot that opportunity that information technology provides as Trinidad and Tobago moves itself into digitization, be it at the motor vehicle and road traffic registry, be it at the land registry, in our intellectual property environment, our digitization, our data protection, our cyber issues, cyber crime and cyber security, they also provide significant opportunities for development. I'd like you to focus upon the opportunity in intellectual property as it comes to plant varieties, for example, as we contemplate as a nation what our role and function will be in new industries such as the cannabis industry, the geographical patent and plant variety indicators that you have in intellectual property means that Trinidad and Tobago can land itself into being the champagne of these new plant varieties and structures. You see, there's a world of opportunity but that world of opportunity, as lucrative and as interesting as it may be, has to be balanced with another challenge. And that's the challenge for ethics and morality. I stand before you as an attorney at law, as a politician. It took me a long time to call myself a politician. Because anecdotally and quite certainly in humor, the people that are viewed to be least trustworthy in life are politicians, ranking number one in that category, and then lawyers. So imagine standing before you being both a lawyer and a politician. That perception is one that really deserves to be engaged and for us to find a solution. And the only solution to that is to stand for the ethics and morality of what law offers. You are as good as your word as an officer to the court, the court expects you, if you practice in court, to tell the truth, to be a fierce advocate for your client's rights. But your first responsibility is as an officer to the court in speaking the truth to the court. And therefore, it is critically important for each and every one of us to remember that you must balance your morality and your ethics in practice against your pursuit for the rights of your client or the interests that you represent and also to the pursuit of money and reward in your practice. I genuinely recommend that you take a healthy dose of societal contribution, of giving back, of understanding that we are our brother's keepers and our sister's keepers and more so in today's world, our sisters keepers. We really do need to understand that many people cannot afford the approach to justice. Many people are ignorant of rights or opportunities and that therefore a healthy part of practice of law requires a degree of compassion and a degree of giving back to society. We must be charitable in our purpose as attorneys at law. I'd like you to also remember that the shoe is very quickly on the other foot. And that whilst you might celebrate at winning today in relation to a legal matter or a legal interest when you eventually come into practice, tomorrow certainly the shoe will be on the other foot. And your colleagues will have to watch you in a state of discomfort when you realize that you may not have succeeded. I therefore invite you to have compassion for your colleagues in the profession. I'd also like to recommend, if I can stretch my time a little bit further, the need for continuing legal education. It is very important that we stay abreast of 
continuing legal education as it provides the antidote to ignorance or the antidote to becoming ossified in practice. The law is a living, breathing instrument and it is something that requires us to be constantly in pursuit of knowledge. As the Institute has produced attorneys at law over time and as practice has shown us, there's one area of strong recommendation that I wish to offer you as graduates today. The Constitution of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago and the CARICOM constitutions have to be considered. And even though it has not been a part of your academic pursuit because of the degree that you pursued with the focus being upon the English jurisprudence and the European Union jurisprudence, we must focus upon our circumstances in constitutional law as it relates to Trinidad and Tobago. And from that, obviously, the public law and administrative law of Trinidad and Tobago calls upon you to have a look at it because everything that you do by way of advice requires you to be familiar with the system in which you operate, which is right here in our beloved Trinidad and Tobago. And as we move to a single market in the CARICOM region, a comparative constitutional understanding of CARICOM countries is a necessary part of your journey. Certainly, it's going to form part of your reflections if you pursue um, academia at the Hewitt Law School. But even though you may go on to the bar vocational course or to the solicitor's course qualification in the United Kingdom, it is critical for you to remember that our legal system requires a firm and strong understanding of our constitutional, administrative and public law peculiarities in Trinidad and Tobago. I ask you to embrace each other, to continue in your friendship with your colleagues, the people who you've passed through legal education with become your friends for life. They are your brothers and sisters in the law. The criminal proceedings rules, the family proceedings rules, the children's proceedings rules, the new rules that are coming out in the civil environment in our civil arena in Trinidad and Tobago, the move to e-probate and other structures, these are necessary areas that require deep reflection as you come into the second stage of your academic pursuit, which is the qualification for professional purposes. You're going to have a lot of fun in law. You're going to have a lot of opportunity in law. You will have a lot of responsibility in law. Be proud citizens of Trinidad and Tobago and step up and contribute. Contribute to your society. Contribute to causes. Contribute to issue analysis. Contribute to facts. Contribute to the national discussion which ought to occupy us as to how we can move to do things better. Life doesn't need to be purely Hobbesian, poor, brutish. It can be a little bit Rousseau if you want to look at the brighter side of life. Your glass is half filled as opposed to half empty. Having a firm pursuit of where we want to go requires us to reflect upon what we have done. Sure, we need to measure the half full glass by what's left to be filled. And therefore, our purpose has to be grounded in facts, grounded in reflection, and grounded in issue analysis. To the very many people who are receiving awards today, congratulations. You deserve every bit of accolade that is given to you today. To those of you who are not in receipt of awards, the mere passage through law school is in and of itself a tremendous achievement. I offer my congratulations to you as a whole, to your valedictorian, to your lecturers, to the University of, the, of London that has prospered and, and allowed um, the, the degree to take root in Trinidad and Tobago as it has. I say congratulations to you all. I wish to say especially to your principal, congratulations on achieving so many successes so frequently as you have. ILAS has become an institution of worth that is well known in Trinidad and Tobago and indeed in the wider region. 
the University of the West Indies is certainly receiving its fair share of competition from you, and I say to you, keep pushing the limit. Each and every one of you will know that I, as Attorney General, went to court and involved myself in prosecuting your rights. Your rights to be admitted to practice in Trinidad and Tobago in the Jamili Hadid matter. As Attorney General, I give you my commitment that I will continue to push for your right to be admitted to practice in Trinidad and Tobago via the six-month route. It is an undertaking that I give you right to the very end as we challenge that process. We have been successful so far, but it has been my pleasure as Attorney General to stand up for the graduates and the persons who are involved in the external degree program because your right to be admitted to practice law is what was under attack. I give you my commitment to carry that case to the very end to ensure that you have the fair and clear opportunity to come into practice in Trinidad and Tobago. I wish you all the very best in life. I thank you for this opportunity provided today to be a part of your graduating class and your ceremony. I regret that COVID has not allowed us to see each other face to face so that we can observe um, those by name and by face. Um, but fortunately, we have a virtual medium. Congratulations from the government of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago and from the Office of the Attorney General and Ministry of Legal Affairs. Good luck.